Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, this video discuss a day before submitting your paper for publication to avoid the disk rejection and to increase the chances of your publications. So what are the key points, what are the key questions which should be asked according to that uh, the, the manuscript, the paper should be compared and uh, what are the key points which should be fulfilled before submitting your paper. So let's start, let's discuss all these steps, let's discuss all these key parameters which are needed uh, for submitting your paper for publications. The first point is that your idea, your paper should be unique, okay? This is very important. If your idea is not unique, your paper will be, will be rejected the first time. Secondly, that your work should be challenging. It, it should not be easy, it shouldn't be only the text only to describe anything. There must be challenging thing, there must be uh, equations that, uh, to mathematically prove your, uh, the, your issues and your solutions. Also, if this is uh, a, co a computer science work or engineering work, there must be an algorithm in it. So you have to include some type of challenging work in your paper. Secondly, that you must have a problem and you have clearly mentioned this in the introduction. You have to know that writing introduction is very difficult. It is very hard to write the introduction. So you have include the problem and you have a perfect solution for this problem. And the solution which you have is comparatively good from the existing solutions. So you have to check this before submitting your paper for publications. The next, uh, and the next is that your paper is well structured and you, you have clearly written the paper. The language is clear. It is free from grammatical and spelling errors and, and it is also concise. The, the sentences are connected with each other. The paragraphs are connected uh, with each other. In short, this is a cre clear academic uh, scientific language which you have used for, for the paper. So after that, every journal have its own structure, its own format. And, 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 and the format which is usually used by every journal is that the first section is the title, the, section, uh, the second is abstract, uh, the third is literature, the fourth one is the proposed solution, and, uh, and the next one, one is the experimental setup, results, discussion, conclusion, and uh, references. You have to check every section from title to the references with, with a selected benchmark, with the key questions, with the key uh, terminologies, points uh, to avoid the desk rejection. For example, the title. The editor, the reviewer or the reader, first you read the title of your paper. This means that the title must be attractive, attractive. it must be concise and if possible include the following key points in your title for example the population which you are addressing for example if i am working on the cloud computing then i have to include the cloud computing in the title so the people the reader the researcher may easily get the point that this paper relates to the cloud computing further that the problem which uh, you are addressing then you have to include the problem uh, in your title Further, the approach which you are using to, uh, to solve this issue, to solve this problem, definitely you will be using an approach. You have to mention this approach in your title too. And the possible outcome which you are getting from this approach for this problem in this uh, population, you have to mention this. And if you mention all these things in, in the title, this means that uh, your uh, title is a good summary, it is uh, concise, it is attractive, uh, and, uh, and the reader will easily get 
that uh, the paper, uh, what type of paper is this, what type of population or what type of problem or what type of approach is discussed in this paper. Your title should be short. The ideal length is from 8 to 15 words and you have to summarize your title from 8 to 15 words. After a title, there is an abstract and uh, as you know that uh, the title and the abstract is freely available by any journal. And uh, definitely the editors and also the author, also the uh, uh, reviewer or, or the reader first write the title and after that the abstract. And uh, after reading the abstract that they decide that what type of paper is this. So in the abstract, you have to clearly mention the key things which you have investigated, the key problem which you have investigated and the approach which you have used and the result which you derived or the result which you go from, uh, uh, from this research, from this approach. Okay, and after the abstract, you have to write the keywords, and these keywords relate, must relate to the population, must relate to the problem, must relate to the possible approach or the approach which you have used, uh, and and the possible outcomes. After the abstract. Uh, the second section is, you can see this is the third section if you say that the uh, title is the first section. This is the introduction. Introduction is usually written at the end, also the abstract and also the title. It is very hard to conclude your all work in the one introduction. And introduction should be on one page or one and uh, a half page but it should be clear, it should be concise and the things, the key things which you must include your, uh, in, your, uh, in your introduction is that the problem is uh, clearly, uh, the motivation is clearly mentioned, the aims uh, are clearly mentioned, the problem which you are uh, invested, investigating or the problem which you have investigated is clearly mentioned and the approach which you have used for that. So these all things must be included in the introductions and uh, as I said that is very uh, uh, critical to write the introduction, it is also very hard to write the introduction so you use a very good language, a very good academic and scientific language to, to write the introduction and to summarize all these things. The next one is the literature. So uh, it is clear that what we include in the literature. But the difficult thing here that how to uh, combine the literature with each other and further that what type of paper we should select uh, from the literature. Because in the literature there are thousands of papers. But what type of paper which we have to select it uh, for our article. So select recent papers and uh, the papers from a good impact factor general and uh, I usually suggest that you have to select a good impact factor general paper. This has different type of benefits. The first thing that you learn a good technique for research. The second is your language improve from a good journal and also the, your techniques improves for, uh, for the good journal if you select paper from the good journal. And if the paper you have selected and it is from any you know, journal which is not popular and uh, usually the, uh, the people, the researchers who are starting their research and their papers uh, uh, got accepted there and you get idea from there, you select papers from there, definitely this will affect your writing, your research skills, etc. So you have to select a good paper from any good journal. and. Uh, uh, especially you can uh, select journal uh, uh, papers and, uh, and the journals from from your base paper literature you have to uh, check the literature of your base papers and from there you can get a good journal too you have to include recent papers and uh, especially if you are going to submit it into to any journal then you have to include paper from that general too because this will increase uh, the chances of acceptance, the chances of publication too. 
and uh, the main problem which I f faced or which I observed the light the writing of the literature because there are different ways uh, to write the literature to connect the different type of ideas with each other whatever it is but your sentences should be connected with each other and your paragraphs must be connected with each other uh, uh, I will say that your literature must flow just like a stream it should be a good flow it must be concise uh, etc to look it good it must not be boring okay and uh, to improve your writing skills uh, in terms of literature you must read a good author research article before writing your own research before writing your own literature after reading after getting these skills you have to write your own literature after literature you worked on the proposed methodology the method which you are using the approach which you are uh, using to tackle this problem so you have to explain uh, clearly that what type of approach you are used and it is necessary to use any structural diagram because it is it is uh, 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 usually thought that uh, one figure is worth of thousand words but there is, is also some type of difficulties with the figures because it is uh, difficult to draw a figure which is self-explanatory so if you are including the figures for example the structure figure which is very important for any research article then this should be a self-explanatory and you have to clearly explain the terms if you are including the mathematical equations then you have to explain the key points the key variables which you have used in your equations and you're uh, including algorithms etc then your algorithm must be explained clearly and for example if you are using different type of equation then how you are using these equations in your algorithm then you have to explain this there after this there is an experimental setup and usually experimental setup and the proposed methodology is written first we usually start the paper writing from the experimental setup so in the experimental setup uh, either we use the simulator or we use the prototype or we work in the real type uh, experimental we work in the real world so you have to clearly gather the data you have to clearly explain the parameters on which you are working and you have to clearly explain the environment your data sets and your population etc and uh, after explaining all these things all, all the uh, setup how you created this how you simulated this how you created th the prototype or how you set it the real environment uh, you run this experiment uh, until the calculation of your result and after that when you get the result you go to write the results so result must be clear and to express the result the be best way is that you have to use uh, uh, graphs you have to use tables because tables is very good way to express your result instead of writing them into the text because it is very difficult to get or understand the result from the text but it is very easy to understand it from the tables or to understand it fr from from the graphs so if you are using graph this should be clear the scale should be clear and this should not be this must not be overcrowded select any two or three parameters and draw a graph for it and if you are using a table uh, i will su suggest to use both and if you are using a table then this table shouldn't be overcrowded because uh, if your table is overcrowded it will not be understandable uh, understandable it will not be readable uh, by the editors by the reviewers and by by the different type of readers after the results you go toward the conclusions and you have to know what is the difference between abstract and the conclusions in the conclusion you just conclude your work that what you did and what it is adding to the community 
how you uh, progressed the the work in, in this area and what will be the future work in this area so you have to clearly explain in uh, this in the conclusion section the next one is the references and usually uh, the authors the the researchers uh, who are writing first time the papers they make mistake in in, in the references and uh, for example me i made a lot of mistakes in the references first time and when my first paper was accepted for publication and when even it was in a productions there were a lot of errors there were a lot of mistakes uh, in the references somewhere in the names or somewhere to differentiate between the article conferences and and symposium so there were a lot of issues so you have to take care you have to um, uh, uh, such any paper, a good research paper, you have to review the references, that how they write the references, and according to that, you have to continue further. So, if you have reviewed your paper all, for all these points which I discussed, you select a journal. And this is also a very good step for, uh, 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 in your research because there are a lot of journals. And there are some journals where 70 papers are rejected in initial phase, which is called a desk rejection. And uh, they accept only uh, 5 or 7 percent papers. They have a very good impact factors. They are very good journal. So you have to check your own paper. Is it enough good? that it should be sent to such like general, such like high impact factor general uh, who have 93% of rejection. You can compare your paper with, with this general paper. But if you think that your paper is not enough good and is not able to be published or to compete the papers which are already been published in this journal, then you have to select any other journal having lowing, uh, lower impact factor because if you uh, submit it to the high impact factor journal it will consume your uh, months your six to seven months in reviewing and after reviewing you will uh, definitely get a decision with rejection rejection is not uh, a failure you get also a good idea you uh, from the reviewer from the different type of review, reviewers because they write in detail that what are what what are the key parts in your paper and after that you uh, enhance the quality the writing quality the technical quality of your paper this is a good but if you have time for that if you can wait for six and seven months for uh, 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 six for seven months you can wait for that and after that you once again work on it for few months for one month and after that you submit uh, to any other channel if you have a time but if you are for example if you are a PhD student and you are waiting for for, for your thesis submission then you have to submit your uh, paper your manuscript in such like journal from where you can uh, get a good results there are some also some ethics which you follow before submitting your paper into the journal the first one is that you can submit your paper to any one journal at a time not uh, to the too many papers this is a very bad practice if uh, if anyone is doing that you have to submit your paper into one general and after that you have to wait for the decision of the or the reviewers and the editors and if they have accepted well and good congratulations and if they have rejected work on their comments and address all their comments and submit it to any other general thank you so much for watching